Okay, so we get to the fourth talk <coughs> of this morning session. Sorry, my voice is going away, but it's, I still need it for only a few hours. Then I can shut up. And our last speaker of this first half of the morning is Cathy Wu. She is at the Protein Information Resource and the Georgetown University Medical Center, both in Washington, D.C. She, oops, that's a, that's a spelling mister. She's a plant pathologist by training in computer scientist. She first developed several protein classification systems and databases like Hyperplast using uh, machine learning, I mean, techniques, neural networks, and so on. And she now adds the PR group. As geographical links, I've got Taipei, studied in West Lafayette, Purdue University, Lansing in Michigan, uh, Tyler, Texas, where you do most of the bioinformatic work and now Washington, D.C. I put George Whitson for I mean, the bowling for a little part when you were in Washington, but then everyone in Newport comes also and I tend to pick up a few names from all of the list of people. I found out this morning this article, which was in, uh, in uh, Science in uh, 2001, where she says, Cathy Wu, she saves the protein information resource database and now aims to restore it to the world best. So that was in 2001. And since, of course, we are now all working together, and I can say that both Rob and me are really happy to work with Cathy and the whole PR group in context of Uniprot to help build the foundation of really something solid for as uh, a protein centric resource. Of course, we're protein centric, sorry about it, but I mean, we shouldn't be ashamed in this meeting, which is on protein. So. And people show always, you know, I mean, we saw deluge, we saw explosion, and so on. And we can basically not contain everything. A dam is not supposed to contain, I mean, all of the water, but to I mean, basically make a big lake and then sh let the water go in in a regulated way. So this is a picture of the uh, Three Gorge Dam in, in China, which is being finished. And we all together working on building this at the level of protein. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, uh, Amos, for the very nice introduction. So it, it's certainly, you know, as a member of the Unipro Consortium, certainly it's a, it's a great distinct uh, pleasure uh, together with the PR group here in celebrating the 20 years anniversary of uh, SwissProt uh, with our colleagues at EBI SIB and certainly all of you here. So what I'm going to do is I will take this opportunity to talk about the various uh, projects that we are conducting at Protein Information Resource, but mainly focusing on our activities in the area of functional annotation, uh, particularly protein family classification, literature mining, and also a new conceptual framework that we developed for protein ontology. So um, just some historic note. Actually, even though uh, PR group joined with Swiss for Tremble groups only about four years ago to form Uniport. Um, about 10 years ago, I developed this database, uh, protein classification database, uh, that already saw a beautiful marriage between the ProSite and the PIR super families uh, using SwissProt and uh, PIR sequences. And that was in 1996 uh, when I published the work. That was during my previous life when I was working a lot on the neural networks uh, for protein family classification. And indeed, that paper published in Journal of Computational Biology in 1996 was the paper that led to the first conversation I ever had uh, with Amos in a conference. And then also later on, my collaboration with Winona Barker at PIR, uh, who was then the, the, the director of PIR uh, that I later joined in 1998. So uh, Protein Information Resource uh, was established um, almost three decades ago, and uh, it was uh, providing, it, it's, it's a resource that has been providing a lot of uh, uh, data, different type of databases and then analytical tools uh, to facilitate uh, genomic, uh, proteomic research. Um, but the primary focus of PR activities at the present time are the following, certainly Uniprot, uh, is the central uh, activity that we are engaged in uh, that uh, relates to the annotation of proteins and uh, utilized uh, three underlying major uh, 
frameworks that we have developed, the PRSF uh, framework for family classification, the IPO class uh, that provide integration of, a, of a, a, a large number of databases uh, in providing data integration and protein mapping, and also the IPO link uh, that provide a resource for literature mining to facilitate extraction, automatic extraction of annotation from the scientific literature. On top of that, we do have a, a number of other projects uh, that I will touch upon uh, just briefly. One is our involvement with the NIAID uh, proteomic research centers and uh, also the, the NCI's uh, CAV grid enablement project. So, um, as uh, Amos mentioned in the din uh, ga uh, gala dinner, that uh, PIR actually grew out of um, atlas of protein sequence and structure. So that was the first volume uh, published in 1965. Um, was was uh, edited by Margaret Dayhoff when she started collecting all the protein sequences to study uh, protein evolution. So the first atlas only consists of 65 proteins. Then um, about 10, 13 years later, there are a total of five volumes uh, with three supplements, and the final volume had a little over 1,000 proteins. That became the basis for the protein, uh, the PII International Protein Sequence Database, which was first released uh, in 1984, uh, where there was about uh, 2,900 proteins. Then the PR group continued to curate, provide functional annotation of proteins, continue to maintain and develop the database in parallel with SwissProt. And uh, only in 2002, when uh, PIR uh, officially joined Uniplot, and then that's when the PIR sequences gradually have been integrated uh, into the Uniplot knowledge base, uh, including uh, all the underlying annotations. So, uh, as, as a member of the consortium, we are in, involved in quite a number of activities. So, in the beginning, uh, the, the, the beginning of the Uniplot project, uh, we focus a lot in trying to bring in the unique protein sequences uh, deposited at PRPSD, especially a lot of sequences that has to do with protein determination into uniform knowledge base, but also very importantly, uh, references and also experimental features uh, with scientific uh, literature evidence, bring those things uh, into the uniform knowledge base, is particularly into the Swiss Pro section of the uniform knowledge base but also because we have been doing uh, protein annotation at PIR for over the years, and we do have a very rigorous uh, framework for doing functional annotation of proteins. It's a framework that's based on the PIR sugar family classification. So uh, in this process, we continue to do the classification, the curation, and then the goal is to provide this as a mean for uh, completely classifying all the protein uh, the entries in Uniform Knowledge Base into this uh, framework. And then on top of that, coupled with a rule-based uh, idea in providing more precise annotation of functional sites, uh, precise annotation of protein names, and go annotation and so forth, uh, based on the family classification idea. Uh, PIR is a site uh, in responsible in uh, producing the UNIREF uh, series of databases that consist of UNIREF 190 and 50. Um, and then certainly the, uh, involved in the first uh, creation of the UNIPROP website and the help system, uh, which is going to, uh, we, we are now uh, joined in the uh, development of the unified uh, UNIPROP website and uh, continuing with uh, user community interaction. So the classification system, uh, basically uh, PRSF, uh, simply put, it's, uh, uh, it's providing, it's a framework providing evolutional relationship of proteins from superfamilies to subfamilies. And in the process of doing the classification, we curate the families, we provide name rules and site rules, and we also build curation platform uh, with a number of tools so that that will facilitate our annotators to do the curation, but also to enable our collaborators to use the curation to, to help with, with uh, family classification. So the, the results of the family classification and curation uh, certainly get into the Uniport uh, knowledge base uh, through the propagation of annotation. But also PRSF is part of the Interpro member database and uh, the PRSF report, the protein family report, are directly available from the website with uh, many uh, links to uh, provide very rich information about protein families 
and the curation platform itself uh, is a downloadable, downloadable system and it will be demoed at ISMB uh, that can be used by curators who are interested in doing floating family classification. The, the iPro class uh, is a database that we developed a number of years ago, uh, grew out of that 1996 uh, protein classification database. So presently, it has already integrated data from more than 90 uh, molecular databases, uh, including the, those uh, databases uh, indicated uh, on, in that picture there. Um, the important thing is that it provides the underlying data warehouse for a number of uh, Uniprod activities that including the protein ID mapping, the NAM mapping, and bibliography mapping. And also we have uh, quarterly updated pre-computed BLAST results directly linked to all the Uniprod knowledge base sequences. And that become a, a great utility for the, for the research community as well. And certainly through uh, integration of this number of uh, molecular databases, it provides integration of family function uh, structure for functional annotation. And that really facilitates uh, the PRS actuation and functional annotation of proteins. So all these uh, rich links and the exact summary become um, a, a source of uh, data that provide value-added reports to the Uniprod uh, proteins. So currently on our website, you can access this additional information, such as all the cross-reference to various NCBI uh, sequence identifier, additional references not in Uniprod uh, knowledge base, but are curated by other uh, sources like SGD, uh, GeneRef, many other uh, useful um, curated uh, literature sources, uh, gene ontology, CAC pathway structure homologue, and so forth. And all this information will be integrated into Uniprod knowledge base directly uh, as logical link and some will be into the physical records when we have the Uniprod, uh, uh, the unified uh, Uniprod website. Um, because of the because of the evidence attribution effort that we are engaged in in bringing the experimental reports from PIRPSD into Uniprop knowledge base, we are uh, actually involved in a so-called retro uh, retro uh, uh, retrospective uh, survey of literature. Um, so we have a number of uh, papers that are marked as literature corpus uh, to indicate how certain, say, uh, post-translational modification uh, are being attributed uh, in the future lines. So that become a very uh, good resource of collaboration of PR group with uh, a number of uh, NLP text mining groups. And in this process, uh, a number of tools were developed, including two online tools. One of them is RLIMSP for extracting protein phosphorylation information from PubMed abstract. And another one is about the thesaurus uh, combining large number of gene and protein names from various sources that can help solve, uh, solve uh, synonym and ambiguity issues of protein gene names. So the two additional projects we are engaged in, uh, one is the NIAID Biodefense Proteomic Program. The goal of this program is to help characterize proteomes of a number of uh, selected biodefense important uh, pathogens and the host cells and also to identify proteins associated with the underlying biology of microbes, the mechanism of the microbial pathogenesis, and the host response, uh, including immune and non-immune uh, mediated host response. So this is a large initiative uh, in, um, initiated by NIAID. So they found seven proteomics research centers together with the admin center, which we are involved in. And as shown by this uh, interaction map here, Actually, it's, it's a rather complicated interaction between the different proteomic centers located in different geographical locations. The different data types are being produced by these centers, including mass spec uh, data, uh, protein antibody data, clone data, two-dimensional GA electrophoresis data, and so forth. Various data types and certain various uh, type of mechanisms, uh, sorry, organisms that are being worked on. So, at the admin center, our task is to provide the collection and integration of this data, provide some rich annotation, and make it available to the scientific community. So, um, so the data integration and NIAID admin center occurs with uh, this um, standard submission protocol with standard data exchange format and control vocabulary to combine the multiple data types 
from the proteomic centers, uh, integrate them at VBI. Then through this uh, protein ID and peptide mapping, we then connect them to the underlying resource that we have at PIR, in, including the family classification, the data integrated database, IPRO class, and certainly the Uniprot knowledge base to provide a much richer presentation of the underlying protein data so that users, when they go to our website, they are able to look at how the, the underlying experimental uh, uh, the experiments are being conducted, the data being generated, and what are the kind of potential uh, targets uh, being identified from these uh, proteomic centers. And a lot of those uh, experiment data, experimental data then become a very nice source of annotation information that we can feed back to the Uniprot knowledge base. Um, we are also um, a member of this uh, NCI's uh, CAVIC initiative, which stands for Cancer Biomedical uh, Informatics Grid. So the idea here is to develop a research platform that engage a large number of uh, uh, research uh, centers uh, to share their research infrastructure data and tools. So PIR, the grid enablement project, is chosen as one of the four uh, CAVIC grid reference projects um, as indicated here, um, so we are part of the NCI uh, grid reference, and in addition to that, we are engaged in a number of other projects in the integrated uh, cancer research. The idea here is really use this as a framework for us to introduce Unicode knowledge base as a central protein information resource for cancer research. And we are also involved in this uh, VCDE workspace where we participate in the discussion of protein models, objects, vocabularies, and ontologies. So regarding our functional annotation efforts, uh, the primary goal is to certainly assist uh, the, the providing accurate, consistent, rich annotation of protein sequence and function for the Uniprot knowledge base. So I mentioned that we use the family classification-driven and rule-based approach. And the idea here is that we would be able to help functional inference of current uncategorized hypothetical proteins, uh, detection, correction of uh, genome annotation errors, and improve the annotation, whether they are under improvement or uh, under annotation or over annotation. And certainly uh, to provide um, support for literature-based curation, um, people have been developing a lot of NLP uh, tools, so uh, that's the idea for this uh, text mining assisted approach where uh, we can also provide attribution to the experimental evidence uh, for annotation extracted from scientific literature. The last part is about the ontology and control of a carry based curation. So we are working very closely in terms of with, with uh, uh, our colleagues in terms of providing guidelines, uh, standardization of protein name, gene name, uh, protein and protein family names, and um, also uh, developing a new uh, conceptual framework for protein ontology in annotating specific protein entities. So for protein classification, uh, certainly um, talking about PR classification, um, we obviously will be talking about uh, the pioneering work that was done by Margaret Dayhoff back in the 70s uh, relates to the evolution of protein families as uh, Bill Pearson uh, discussed uh, the other day. And so, Extending from the PR super family, we have developed this network uh, classification system from super family to subfamily levels. And the idea is that uh, we need to reflect the evolutionary relationship of the, both the four legs proteins and their component domains. And so the basic unit of this uh, PRSF classification is a homeomorphic family where all the members in the proteins uh, families uh, share four legs similarity and share common domain architecture. So by looking into both the full length uh, protein similarity and the component domains, it really allows us to provide annotation at both levels, at the le level of uh, generic uh, biochemical function level uh, based on the domains, but also specific biological functions based on the, uh, the full length uh, proteins. And so this become a framework that help us to also look into some interesting evolutionary relationships, uh, certainly as a basis for our functional annotation. And the classification is also part of the basis for us to develop an ontology for protein evolution. 
So this um, uh, shows the basically the uh, PRSF classification system where we have homeomorphic family in the middle. They indicate um, each uh, protein family that covers the four length similarity. And they were all uh, connected to the domain super family as represented by PFAM domains. Uh, so basically, these are all the homeomorphic family that share the same common domain uh, and so forth. So if appropriate, we would De develop a super family to capture the higher level relationship of the homeomorphic family. And if needed, uh, we develop subfamilies to capture the functional specialization of the, of the homeomorphic family. So, um, so we built this uh, curation uh, framework that provides uh, a, a platform for us to do classification and curation. Uh, it involves multiple steps, starting with automatic procedures that provide automatic clustering of protein families um, and placement of new entries into families. So these are purely computationally done. But then from the, the basis of the computational clusters, then we, using, we, we use many number of different tools to do computer-assisted manual curation. So that's the time when our curators will decide how the families will be divided or uh, promoted uh, at different levels, superfamily to subfamily, and uh, provide name rules and optional site rules if appropriate, and generate and uh, it, um, select seed members to generate family hidden marble models. Uh, a number of classification tools are used. Uh, iterative block, blast class basically provide iter iterative uh, blast searches and then present it in a tree structure. Uh, we have a viewer for multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic tree coupled with uh, annotation tables uh, because the PRSF classification is in a network structure. Uh, we use the DAC editor to provide an editing environment. And as I mentioned, there's a demo for uh, the platform uh, in ISMB. And then certainly there are also a number of visualization analysis tools that we develop uh, to uh, allow our users to come into the website and do various type of analysis. So for example, one can look at the taxonomy distribution of uh, a number of protein families and you can look at their evolutionary relationship through uh, phylogenetic patterns of, uh, or taxonomy dis uh, distribution. And then certainly uh, domain display showing the relationships of protein families sharing the common domain and a browser to look at the family hierarchy from PFAM level to the superfamily family and subfamily and to the entry level. And this is an example of a family report uh, that indicates uh, detailed annotated information with links to a lot of visualization and further analysis. Um, I, I see I only have like five minutes, so I need to skip a few. Uh, the, the, here, the basically indicates that uh, in the family classification, uh, we have a way of looking at not just uh, classification results or functional uh, specialization as, as the, as the four-length protein, but also very precisely of uh, single amino acids or amino acids patterns uh, through the name rule and site rule uh, annotation. I think I'm going to just skip this one. This is uh, very well explained in one of the posters that we have here. Uh, the literature mining resource, the idea here basically is to really use database to provide means for uh, better text mining and with the uh, text mining results to assist, um, to assist uh, protein annotation. Uh, so basically it's, it's a really nice uh, synergy uh, between the two activities. Uh, from the, the IPO link, this, this uh, literature mining resource, uh, we provide um, uh, Uniprot uh, bibliography mapping in IPO class, uh, but also the, from the literature corpus, it became a, a, a source for annotation where we uh, generate um, Arlen's P uh, text mining program and also where we develop uh, another machine learning based program for text categorization. For the protein dictionary, uh, we also have a number of uh, publications showing how it could be used to assist uh, protein entity um, um, tagging in scientific literature, and also we develop entity named uh, tagging guide. Um, so literature corpus for text mining, basically 
Yeah, I think I can skip over this. Uh, this is online Arlene's P showing how um, a user can come in, submit PubMed abstract, and then receive the results, uh, summarizing the phosphorylation information, including the kinase, the phosphorylation sites, and the proteins being phosphorylated. And that is directly connected to the underlying literature uh, that, that is uh, marked with those uh, different protein objects and mapped uh, to uh, Uniport references either through PMID or through uh, NAM mapping through Bathosaurus. Bathosaurus, uh, based on the IPRO class uh, underlying protein mapping, connect information from more than 23 databases and currently provide more than 3.2 million names. So one can search uh, protein entries sharing the same uh, protein entries sorry, sharing the protein, same protein names, and it allows a very uh, nice way for us to resolve uh, name ambiguity, especially when you look at that these names are actually associated with different protein families. Oftentimes, that's an indication of uh, ambiguity. But also, other times, it helps us to define and detect the uh, underlying inconsistency of the names, and often that leads to uh, identification of annotation errors. Uh, one can also retrieve the Bathosaurus report here, which basically lists all the synonyms has to do with this protein entry from the various sources, connect to how other entries have been using these names, and the source attribution, which provide the ID mapping. Um, so I see I only have two minutes. Uh, so for this uh, protein ontology, what I just wanted to say is that so we have uh, worked with uh, Barry Smith at Obo Foundry and also Judy Blake uh, in developing the conceptual framework for the protein ontology. And currently, the, the framework consists of two sub-ontologies, the ontology for protein evolution to define the, the uh, evolutionary classes. And uh, in this process, uh, better align how these evolutional classes relates to other ontologies, including gene ontology. The second part of ontology is an ontology to describe protein modified forms so that we will have a mean to represent the genetic variation, alternate splicing, proteolytic cleavage, and post translational modification. And the idea there is that so that we can provide much more precise annotation on the attached onto the specific, say, spliced modified forms rather than just a reference protein. And we have a prototype uh, developed. Uh, which is accessible from PIR.Georgetown.edu slash pro. Uh, it is still under development, but the basic framework is described there. This is a busy slide, no way to explain that in uh, 30 seconds. So uh, basically, it shows the two components, the pro-evo component that uh, connects the homeomorphic protein at PRSF to their domain um, uh, families, uh, PFAM sequence family level, SCOP structure family level, and uh, providing that evolutional, uh, the, the, the formal relationship of evolutionary rela uh, relationships. And then the, uh, from the homeomorphic protein family, um, the, the, the class would then be uh, connected directly to the reference proteins and uh, depends on what are the modified forms uh, available for that reference protein, uh, it, the relationship will be specified. And this is just an illustration of how once one uh, developed this kind of ontology, the very precise ontological terms could be attached. So for example, here we have a reference protein, ASM human, that actually has two forms. Uh, one is a lysosomal form, another one is a secreted form, and that goes to different cellular compartments. And you really need to have that kind of resolution uh, to provide very specific, precise annotation. So. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge <laughs> um, members of uh, the PR team, uh, wonderful members uh, both in the protein science team and the informatics team and uh, engagement of a, a number of students uh, which are very enlightening. Uh, Darren, the protein science team lead is here. Uh, after four days, finally he arrives today at the conclusion of this uh, symposium. And also Hong Zhang, who is the bioinformatics team lead, is also here and Rajan Mazumda is also here. Uh, certainly collaborations, you know, um, wonderful collaboration. I really appreciate all the, all the you know, wonderful um, 
collaboration that we have with Rob, with Amos, and, and the entire EBI SIP teams. The Knight project uh, and uh, the text mining project, uh, other collaborators are listed there. Um, the funding support for this are from many sources, so basically different sources for the Unipro project, for the NCICAB project, for the Knight project, and uh, NSF primarily for the IPO class and tax mining project. Thank you very much. So we have time for one question for Kathy. Anybody? Otherwise, we can talk with her at the break. Thank you very much.